Uh, so to get an idea of like um, how many of you here have an idea of what BMCs are or baseboard management controllers are? Cool, that's, that's quite a bunch. So that's nice. Um, so uh, me and Juliana um, work at Booking.com and we deal with a lot of bare metal servers. Um, I am work part of the team that helps provisioning uh, these bare metal servers and getting them into production. Um, yeah. Yeah. And our presentation is BNC Lib, and the idea is to have an uh, abstraction layer uh, between all the different BMC vendors. Yeah. So, uh, so to simplify things and just make it accessible, the idea of a BMC is that it's this device that is, sits alongside your server. Uh, it, in computational power, it's just uh, equivalent to like a Raspberry Pi or like a solar router or something like that. Um, and it, you can find them like uh, they run off this uh, system out chip which basically has various computer components on a single die and uh, you find these on uh, servers and chassis and uh, switches and J boards and J um, yeah um, yeah and uh, we have different flavors uh, with a single function right so uh, the idea of the BMC is to give you uh, access to manage this device uh, outside of your data network interface, right? So out of band access to server switch, JBots, uh, last resource, a power cycle reboot, and hard, uh, hard reset, IPMI, VMC, uh, IKVA, serial console, uh, inventory information, hardware locks, and it's now becoming a bit more important with ILO 5 because it becomes a rule of trust, right? So now also you can sign uh, your firmware and make sure that it's only running uh, an accepted firmware for that given hardware. Yeah. So to look at like the most common um, BMC chip is, this is the, by, from AS, AS Speed, this, this one runs in a lot of Simulacro and Quanta servers, and uh, uh, it's, it basically has very simple functions, like it's got a uh, 400 megahertz CPU and uh, just some RAM and some inbuilt VGA capabilities, and it also has its own NIC, which provides like out of band access. So, uh, but what's special about this thing is that it has access to like the main board. Um, it's able to speak over the PCIe bus. Uh, to a lot of components, and then I2C and uh, SPI. Um, and it also is able to interact with the network cards um, directly, so it can receive packets and send packets. Yeah, and about BMC, right? So what are the standards? Uh, so everyone knows about our PMI. Uh, it's old, it's useful, but it's, uh, it's buggy. And although it's a standard, not all of the vendors follow the same standards, right? So you always have extensions and so on. It also means that you will never have the same behavior when you're calling things across different vendors. And there is SSH, right? So uh, we will talk about it later as well. Uh, so when you, are, when you talk about SSH to BMCs, there are no standards. So each vendor can implement the function with whatever name they decide. And you will need to figure out uh, what you need for each one of these vendors. Uh, web interfaces, they are slow and buggy. So, uh, for instance, uh, one of the vendors that we were testing, uh, when you try to remote, uh, open the remote console, uh, if you are using Firefox, it would destroy your machine. Uh, it would throw up uh, to the hell and make you reboot. Uh, so this get, uh, it gets interesting, right? And now there is uh, there's something that's coming that it would help, right? So it's like an improvement over IPMI, that's Redfish. So the idea is awesome, but we get in the same issues, right? So some of the extensions, you will need to go through OEM uh, because, so one example is storage, right? So if you are using uh, IPMI, the storage extension, but your vendor doesn't offer the standard one, right? So they will have something inside of OEM and you need to know how to call for each one of the vendors that you have. Uh, things about the uh, Redfish that's nice, 
uh, because it's an API. But you know, BMC is something really simple. And you, when you think about uh, using your data for that, it's a bit over cube. Uh, uh, as we mentioned, a reliable body implementation. So I can give an example that there is a vendor that the standard definition tells you that you, have, you need to have the host name, right, a part of your uh, Redfish payload. Uh, one of the vendors, they just don't add that, right? So then you cannot have a reliable uh, inf uh, information across all of them. Yeah. Um, so what is the problem that we are actually talking about here? Like, it's, it's when you are working at scale and you're trying to um, work with a whole lot of pyramidal servers and not just, like, one vendor, but multiple vendors, multiple generations, uh, the real the problem itself starts to magnify. And uh, so we try to, like, the team is basically a bunch of engineers, and there's so many servers. How do you deal with so many servers? And uh, we, we really want to treat these servers as light, as light bulbs, essentially, so, or as cattle, basically. You plug them in, they should work, um, and then, you know, you want to be able to uh, reliable provision a machine, right? So when you tell a machine that you want to PXC, it actually should PXC. Uh, if, if you want to reboot a machine, it should reboot properly, right? Uh, you want to be able to get your inventory uh, properly, right? So uh, these, these are things that they sound really simple, but they not always have happen. Another thing is that to manage BMC configuration, right? So we have configuration management for a bunch of different operating systems, but there was nothing for, for BMCs available. Yeah, um, and yeah, when you want to diagnose like hardware problems, most of these are logged uh, to an area where the BMC has access. And how do you do all of this um, like at scale, right? Uh, without much manual intervention. Uh, which is why we actually uh, Juliana here started writing a tool which gave birth to BMC Lib, and currently it supports like all of these different vendor hardware, and it abstracts away, um, like for for example, for configuration, it abstracts away user account creation, syslog, NTP, LDAP, and all of these uh, into a single like configuration uh, bunch of methods. Um, and uh, what BMC lib is, right? So we will give some examples of applications written on top of BMC. But BMC lib gives this idea, right? So it doesn't matter the vendor that you use. Uh, there are a set of expected uh, actions that you will have for each one of them, right? So you want to get uh, how much memory you have for a given hardware. You want to be able to reboot properly and so on. So yeah. one example of rebooting a machine uh, is that depending on the vendor, and if you are using UFI, you ask to PXC and reboot. Uh, and it won't work, because for this vendor, you need to ask to PXC, reboot, and power on. Even though this machine is already powered on. This is a bug, right? But then, if, if you don't have a library that deals with that, you will need to always have exceptions for each one of the vendors that you need to deal with. Yeah. Uh, so one of the tools that we built was called, is called BMC Butler. It actually uh, basically reads a bunch of configuration declarations and looks at the inventory and then applies this configuration to all the assets in the inventory. Uh, it, it basically do, it does some execution of actions as well, but it, can, uh, it currently is in production and is able to manage a lot of uh, BMCs. So this is uh, Dora, is a Stay Inventory and Explorer. So this actually is the tool that gave, uh, gave birth to BMC Lib. So we wrote this tool to have a dynamic data center inventory of the hardware that we purchased. And after playing with, uh, with Dora, we noticed that actually all of these BMC actions, they could become useful. And from there, we extracted uh, the core components, and we moved that to BMC Lib. Uh, so this payload that we have at the right, it gives you an example of the type of data uh, that we can collect and relationship, right? So if your machine has NICs, you can call endpoint slash NICs and so on, and it will give back all the information that you have for that uh, type of hardware. So it could be like a HP device, a Dell device, it could be um, even Supermicro, and the information, the inventory information is just presented in one standard 
way. Yeah. So another example is Actor. Uh, so we we couldn't find a better logo. Uh, 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 this uh, so this API it gives you the, uh, it works like a proxy, right? So let's suppose you call the API, the slash endpoint, and the BMC or the chassis. Uh, it will connect and trigger the action that you expect, right? Uh, one of the useful things that we added there is that it can take a screenshot of the BMC and gives you back. Uh, it, it also uh, makes possible to build uh, more interesting applications. Yeah, so this was, uh, this is one of the things we actually built on top of BMC a little bit was possible because we abstract away all these different BMCs. So the BMC exposes like uh, the screen preview of the console, which is actually just around 300 uh, by 300 pixels in size. Uh, you can't make any information, like you can't read it, you can't run it through an OCR and try to understand what is on the screen, but if a sysadmin actually looks at the screen, you are able to judge and understand, uh, okay, this is stuck in like installing CentOS or it's stuck in the BIOS. You can't read stuff on the screen. But so we thought that, okay, since we can capture images, what if we could uh, run it through um, well, first train a model, retrain a model, and uh, get it to recognize what is on the screen. We didn't exactly want to know what exact screen, but we wanted to know what the state of the machine is like at a given time. And this was possible because we were able to uh, basically get actor to speak to BMC lib, fetch the screenshot, uh, run it through image classification, and then we, uh, it's not very clear here, but it gives you the probability of what uh, state of machine is it in? Like, is it installing the OS? Is it in the BIOS? Or is it uh, stuck somewhere else? So based on a bunch of labels, yeah. Uh, a good example of that, so we deal with a bunch of servers, right? Just to log in to the BMC uh, and to troubleshoot what happens, it takes from six to eight minutes, right? Because you need to log in, you need to download the, uh, the Java thing, you will need to open and check. And this, it can show uh, in like about five seconds if our issue is because someone actually uh, didn't plug in the machine properly inside of the data center. Yeah. The way that thing, we cable things, we always know that the out of band will work, uh, but data might not be connected properly. And with the OCR, it will tell exactly that there is no, uh, no media detected uh, so we know already that uh, someone needs to go and check the physical connection. Yep, uh, that basically ends like what we wanted to show. But the takeaways here are like BMC lib tries to like, abstract away like when the BMC is into a single API. And if you are looking to inventorize, configure, update servers, you need to check out the BMC toolbox. We're trying to get more people to actually who are working with hardware to uh, see if we can add support for their hardware. Uh, the idea is to um, create an open source library that will force vendors to support that open source library instead of them forcing us into vendor lock-in situations like the open manager. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also that BMCs um, are a fundamental part of the service life cycle, so we must manage them at the, by now. Okay, so uh, the question is that if we expose uh, a different API or if we just uh, re-expose Redfish? Yeah, so if, if our tooling is close to Redfish. So what, what we do is that we try to find a better way, right? So, for instance, if you want to reboot a machine, and we know that it's much more reliable to do it over SSH than over uh, IPMI, 
we'll do it over SSH and we'll ensure that it happens, right? So uh, what we, so in the end, the, the API that we expose is not like Redfish. We just expo expose a library that's written in Go and you have these endpoints to call. But what we do is that we choose the better way to get the data that you require. It doesn't matter if it's exposed through IPMI, Redfish, or some uh, HP parsing endpoints. Yeah, so to just add to that, PMCLib just exposes a bunch of functions that you call, say power off, and that works across multiple vendors in a consistent way. Thank you again. Sorry.